The international landscape looks very different than it did several decades ago. From think tanks and foundations to businesses and civil society organizations, growing numbers of non-state actors are seeking to transform the aspiration to create a sustainable peace into reality. And they're often succeeding where governments and international agencies have failed. OEF's research team talked to some of the innovative leaders in this field, seeking to learn more about the challenges they confront and the creative solutions they're developing to overcome them. Water for People is an international non-profit working across nine countries and reaching some four million people. In the countries in which they work, their programs seek to bring safe water and sanitation, not to a few towns and villages, but to all of them. Everyone Forever is a bold goal, and when you ask someone to believe in it, water and sanitation really is a human right. For NGOs in, in the development sector, we, um, we tend to look at very short-term metrics, and beneficiaries for us was a very short-term and easy metric. Um, what was harder, and when we really took a deep look, what change do we want to see? We want to see water flowing, and water continue to flow for 10 years. Toilets being used and toilets. So, so we did, we, we really changed the metric and we pushed the sector to really change their metrics as well. But what you need with that is you need some sort of innovation that allows you to track that. So we spent a lot of time and money and resources, um, unrestricted I would say, because nobody funded us um, for this, but we came up with a handheld Android app that allowed us to track both everyone indicators, so is everyone covered and is water flowing, and then sustainability metrics, which is the forever piece. The One Earth Future Foundation Shiraco program encourages economic development in Somalia by connecting micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises with potential investors. The goal is to catalyze job creation and so reduce the unemployment that is so often associated with political violence. By providing Somali entrepreneurs with access to capital in order to expand their businesses, Shiraco seeks to foster a thriving business sector and a more resilient and peaceful Somalia. And there have been times we've had to, you know, take the feedback and factor that in and retool and go back to the table, um, which is right, because really if you want it to be sustainable, they need to own it. Um, that's happened already in some of the work we've done around building effective business associations where the local stakeholders have benefited from our bringing together best practices and introducing them to good institutions to support, but they actually have to be the ones bringing it forward and championing it. Beat for Life works with women in impoverished communities in Uganda to develop the skills and confidence they need to become successful entrepreneurs. Beat for Life believes that in order to end poverty, we must transform lives by empowering women through the creation of sustainable business opportunities. Um, surprisingly, the most innovative thing that Beat for Life has done is really pushed uh, the idea that women living in extreme poverty can be fantastic entrepreneurs. The street business school was really born out of the idea that even women living on a dollar a day, even women who have no capacity to take a risk, if you give them the opportunity, can become amazing entrepreneurs. They have everything that they need inside them. They have learned how to survive in so many different difficult circumstances that with a little bit of, of training and the confidence that they need to believe in themselves, they are able to just uh, do amazing things. Women are opening businesses, sometimes two or three businesses. Um, so even without the cash infusion that the beads provide, women in our street business school in a six month period on average see a 50% increase in their income. Africaid and its KISA project developed training curricula for girls in secondary schools in Tanzania. These programs aim to build young women's confidence, motivation, and leadership skills. We don't provide scholarships for our scholars. The girls, if they want to be a part of, their, of, of our program, know that they're not going to get a monetary reward for participating. So they're participating because they want to. You know, it is hard for our girls to, um, to stay in school. Um, but because of this mentorship program that we have, we've really facilitated their continued enrollment in school because they have an adult that they can turn to if they have, if they have problems. They have uh, 
you know, their cell phone numbers and so they can call 24-7 whenever they need to. I just think in 15 years, because of, of these projects, because of these programs where we're really investing in young women, I think it's, it's going to be a different world. That's my hope. Colorado is home to more than 200 nonprofit organizations and businesses that focus on international development. Yet most of these groups operate in isolation from one another. The Posner Center seeks to change this. It does so by bringing together some 60 development oriented businesses and nonprofits in a 25,000 square foot shared space in Denver. The idea is to spur innovation by enabling groups to cross pollinate through the exchange of ideas, the overlap of programming, and the generation of more comprehensive and lasting solutions to global poverty. And it just makes a lot more sense for a number of organizations to come together and develop, for instance, one of the Collaboration Fund grants, um, a curriculum for women entrepreneurs for organizations, as opposed to each of those individually going out and looking for resources and spending their time developing something that really could be the same for all of them. So part of it is efficiency, and part of it is just, you know, how do we get all these smaller organizations to be doing a better job of their work? You know, these are the things that really help um, organizations come together so their missions are aligned, you know, they have, they work with similar populations, they have similar goals, like those are all things you can kind of put down on paper and think about it. But at least 50%, if not 90% of the collaboration is just how people, how kind of interpersonal relationships emerge and does this person like this person and will they actually do well working together. Together with the communities in which they serve, these and other non-state actors are challenging the narratives and practices of the mainstream international development community. And with their stress on innovation and grassroots capacity building, they're beginning to create the building blocks for a truly sustainable peace. <laughs>